Hi everyone, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. So whether you just got a Mac for Christmas or you're going to be getting one, or you've had one for a while, it doesn't matter. In this video, we're going to share 15 tips and tricks to get the most out of your new Mac or your old Mac. Just beginner tips to make sure that you really know how to get the most out of it. And this video is presented by Clean My Mac X, the best software for keeping your Mac safe, clutter-free, and running as fast as it did on day one. Check out the link in the description if you want to learn more. So number one, get words as you type. If you don't know how to spell a word, unfortunately the Mac doesn't have just a Google search engine built in to every place you're typing, but you can use the function five button to actually get suggestions as you're typing, which is really great. So if you're ever unsure of your spelling or if you're putting in the right word, you can use this tool to figure it out for yourself and it's very handy. Number two is Spotlight search for calculations. I use Spotlight probably 20 times a day. So Spotlight not only allows you to very quickly search for files and documents and even just search the web kind of right from Spotlight, but it also allows you to do calculations. So you can do 125 with the asterisk two and that'll be multiplication. You can do a subtraction, division. Of course, it follows the order of operations so you can throw in parentheses in there too. It's also great for things like currencies. A lot of times I'm converting things from euros to US dollars. So I can just type in 125 euro and it'll give me the US dollar conversion right away. Spotlight Search is a very, very handy and powerful tool for your Mac. And you can activate this using command space or using the button in the corner for Spotlight Search. Force quitting an application is a tragedy when it has to happen, but sometimes apps are just very unresponsive and you're left with no other option than to kill it. To do this on a Mac is command option escape. This will bring up the force quit menu and allow you to kill a program that isn't responding. You can also go up to the Apple logo in the corner of your Mac and click the force quit button. But either way, it'll allow you to force quit an application that just isn't responding. Now instead of dragging files you don't want into the trash can, which works, but isn't as quick, you can use the shortcut of command delete to put it into the trash can. And this is very simple and it's instantaneous, so you don't have to worry about any dragging and dropping. Now a great tip, not actually in this video, but from our sponsor is to try out Clean My Mac X for free with the link in the description. Clean My Mac X works with your Mac to delete years worth of system junk find hidden apps and folders, find and prevent malware and other security risks, make sure that you have your computer running at the latest software, and more. You can find and remove viruses and get rid of junk, delete old files, and find apps that are hurting your battery life or performance, and more. And the best part is, is that it's officially notarized by Apple, so you know you're getting a good product. Check the link in the description if you want to try a free trial version. Screenshotting is really powerful and really easy on the Mac. It all is based off Command Shift 3, 4, and 5. So Command Shift 3 will screenshot the entire page, and if you have multiple displays connected, it will screenshot multiple pages. If you do Command Shift 4, this will allow you to create a box of the screenshot that you want. You can drag it out with your cursor. So if you just want to screenshot a little snippet of one of your screens, you can do that. And then Command Shift 5 does the same thing with video recording. So if you want to record a screen recording, Command Shift and 5 will give you those options. You can select your display or drag out an area and you can even include mouse pointers and audio and stuff like that. So that's a really great way to do screen recordings or screenshots on your Mac. Command Shift 3, 4, and 5. And once you get the hang of those, you'll be a pro at it and it's really nice. So you know when you turn on your computer and like 20 things start and half the things you just exit out of right away, or sometimes every time you start up your computer, you have to launch a program that doesn't start up right away. Well, choosing which items show up at login and startup is a very handy tool for your Mac. So if you go into your system preferences, the settings, and you go into users and groups, you can click login items at the top, and then you can check the boxes for those apps in the list or add more using the plus sign button. This is really simple and it's a great way to customize and take a little bit more control with your Mac startup. Seven, accents on letters. So this one's really simple. If you want to add an accent to a letter, you just hold down that letter and the screen will pop up just like on your phone or your iPad. It'll pop up with the accent options and then you can click the numerical value that corresponds to it and it will add it for you. Accessing the emoji. They're pretty quick to find when you're on uh, messages because there's the emoji button or if you use your touch bar, there's also that emoji drawer, but I never really use that. But to quickly pull up the emoji card, is much better. This is really simple. You just do control command space and it will pop up the emojis. You can also add the emoji keyboard button into your title bar up top, your menu bar, and that's really simple to access emojis as well. 
Now speaking of the menu bar, a nice customization to maximize screen real estate is to turn on auto hide or show the menu bar. And this will automatically hide the menu bar until you move your cursor up to the top to reveal it. I do this with the dock already because I just don't need the dock to be showing up because how often am I going to the dock versus how much just a little bit extra real estate I can get on the screen. So if you combine these, if you hide the dock and hide the menu bar, they'll always be there, but you can very easily get a little bit extra screen real estate by hiding those two things on your Mac. All right, now this one's kind of a niche setting. I don't know how many people will use it, but it's cool if you ever do want to use it. So if you do shift option while hitting the volume button up or down, it'll allow you to change it in very fine increments, much finer than like the one whole block each time. So if you're really nitpicky about your audio or for whatever reason you just need that perfect volume, this will allow you to just barely make it louder or quieter with the fine tuning volume control button. So that's pretty cool. So on Windows, you usually have the delete and the backspace button, which will allow you to delete forward and delete backwards. But on the Mac, you don't have that natively. But if you use function and delete, it'll allow you to delete forward. So if you're at the beginning of a word or beginning of a sentence, it'll allow you to delete forward. So you don't have to arrow over delete back. You can just delete forward. That's a pretty nifty trick. Just do function and delete and you can delete forward. Now, one of the nice features of the past couple years with Finder on the Mac is the ability to have uh, tabs within your Finder. But if you have a bunch of Finder windows open with um, different SD cards and different folders open, you can actually merge these folders from the settings, from the Windows settings. You can merge them all and it'll put it into different tabs. And this is a really nice way to consolidate your Finder options. Next is the ability to batch rename files. So if you've ever pulled in a bunch of photos from your phone or any type of system that you're just working with a lot of similar files, you can actually batch rename these to go in an order to follow a pattern. And this is a really powerful tool. Next is split view. So split view has changed a little bit in recent years. Now, if you hold on to the green button in the top corner, it'll give you options to go left screen or right screen. And split view is a really nice way to be working on multiple documents at once. And finally, you can drag in your desktop and documents folder into your iCloud drive via Finder. And this is awesome if you have enough storage in your iCloud drive that you can store all of your contents of your desktop and your documents to all of your iOS devices like your phone and your iPad with the Files app. So that's great. So those are 15 very simple tips and tricks for your Mac. Let me know what you think and make sure to check out Clean My Mac X down in the description with the link below. Anyway, thanks for watching.